The Healthcare Security Cast is sponsored by 3D Network Technology. Reliability is our core value. Visit www.3dnetworktechnology.com. And by Genetech, delivering security strategies for healthcare. Visit Genetech, that's G E N E T E C, dot com. And by the Change Execution Group. Visit 360lifetransformations.com. Before we get into today's show, I want to invite you to connect with the Healthcare Security Cast on a new platform. It's a text based platform called Community. To join, all you have to do is text my community number, and that number is 647 372 2042. That number again is 647 372 2042. Welcome to the Healthcare Security Cast, the podcast dedicated to healthcare security, safety, and emergency management. If you are involved with a healthcare security program or desire to be, this podcast is for you. Join the conversation as we discuss the issues that matter to healthcare security professionals while leveraging the expertise of healthcare security thought leaders and experts in personal development. And now, here's your host, Brian Hamilton. Welcome to the Healthcare Security Cast for Wednesday, October the 14th, day four of our Healthcare Security and Safety Week recognition. As we've done all week, we're going to start off today's episode with the recognition tip of the day from Canada's recognition expert, Sarah McVannell. This is your Healthcare Security and Safety Week recognition tip of the day brought to you by Sarah McVannell. Canada's recognition expert, and of course, Brian Hamilton and his amazing podcast. Here's our tip. Send something home. And I don't mean send a gift card home or send people home. What I mean is think about your top performing people. You know the ones, the people who will work on a project if you ask them to, and even if it cuts into some of their work time or they have to spend extra time, they're going to get it done because they always follow through. Maybe it's that person who picks up extra shifts or picks up the less popular shifts that you know need to be filled and you're so grateful. In fact, maybe you're even hesitant to ask them, but they can be relied upon. Surprise them and their family because let's face it, it's the families who give a lot to your work too when their loved ones are giving up time at home to be able to come and pick up those extra shifts or work on those projects. So surprise them with dinner being sent home. Surprise them by flowers being sent home. Surprise them with them having a gift certificate to go out and do something really cool as a family on a weekend. I am willing to bet the next time you need to ask that amazing staff member to give up a little bit of home time, they will experience less pushback from the family at home because they know not only is the individual appreciated, the whole family is appreciated too. Thank you, Sarah. And to hear more from Sarah, feel free to listen to episodes 24 and 39 of the Healthcare Security Cast, or check out her website, greatnessmagnified.com. Hopefully you had the opportunity to tune into the Healthcare Heroes in Security and Safety webinar presented by Bonnie Michaelman and Roy Williams. If you missed it, you can catch the replay on the IHSS website, iahss.org. If you click on the events tab and scroll down to the webinars, By by the time you're hearing this, it will likely be available. And of course, this being day four of the Healthcare Security Cast celebration of IHSS Healthcare Security and Safety Week, there's still an opportunity to recognize your team and individual contributors and highlight anything that your team has accomplished recently. If you do wish to be involved in the recognition, just send me a text message at 647-372-2042. That's 647-372-2042, and we'll get you on the show. And now we'll start off today's recognition. Mark Reed at MLK Hospital, Los Angeles, California. Just want to uh, give a big shout out to, to all our staff here in recognition of Healthcare Security Safety Week. From our third shift staff that have been doing some amazing work dealing with a lot of incidents, GSW victims and combative family members and, and friends come into the ED to just dealing with that, stepping up, really, really hitting the nail on the head. Sam Obergon, our first shift supervisor, going above and beyond every single day from, you know, hitting our target metrics, 
making sure all our systems are, are in, in line, trying to better himself and his staff through education and certifications. Recently, we, you know, we had a, a busy day, probably a busier day than normal, where we had three separate uh, workplace violent incidents, combative patients, uses of force. Uh, but the big takeaway from that day really was, wasn't those incidents. It was the other 11 documented incidents where the staff just, you know, were able to de-escalate. We focus a lot on the training and, and dealing with violence and things like that. And, you know, just the success of 11 incidents that had the potential to escalate into violence. Where our staff were called, you know, our uniformed public safety officers respond to that call, able to talk with that patient and de-escalate and get them to, you know, kind of level set and come back down and ensure that we don't have to go hands-on. We don't have violence. There's no risk of anyone getting hurt or things like that. Those are the huge wins that, you know, I think often go unnoticed and undocumented because it happens so frequently. You know, it just so happens we, we were able to show that these, that day, 11, 11 different times that day, we just responded and talked to people, you know, and built that rapport, that relationship and got them to come down and, and really, you know, resolve those conflicts without having to use force or, you know, have our staff get hurt, have the, the nursing staff get hurt, have the patient get hurt. Too, far too often, we're dealing with patients, you know, they don't come to the hospital for happy things. They're having, you know, a, a difficult time in their life, things like that. A lot, a lot of stuff happening. They're confused, maybe not knowing what's going on. So they tend to get frustrated. But, you know, just our staff responding and being able to talk to them and, and really, I mean, that's just amazing work. And, and far too often, I think, it goes unrecognized when we're able to de-escalate and resolve conflict prior to uh, violence being occurring. Normally, we celebrate Healthcare Security and Safety Week in, in a couple different ways. One, it coincides with our annual training. So we, we, we do our training events. It's an eight-hour day where we talk about, you know, our HR policies, our, our escalation, our use of force, infection prevention, patient experience, some of the new things we're, we're doing in the department, some of the training opportunities that are offered from FEMA to TLO and InfraGuard, things like that. A lot of food, I'm not going to lie, we, we, we have a lot of food on a lot of days because those are always big wins. And usually it coincides with the, the Greater Los Angeles Orange County chapter of IHSS with our annual officer appreciation luncheon. Unfortunately, you know, due to the, the pandemic and stuff, we weren't able to hold the luncheon this year. But we're transitioning to a, to a web base for the chapter and we'll be able to recognize one officer from each hospital throughout the region. And then overall, the chapter will pick the, the chapter officer of the year and be able to recognize them for their, their outstanding and amazing work. We at MLK are always happy to participate with that. You know, we can never recognize our staff enough, you know, as much as we try. Uh, and never, it can never be enough because really, you know, they come in every single day and just really do amazing work providing a safe environment for our, our staff, our patients, and our visitors to where, you know, they can focus on healing and not have to worry about, you know, is something going to happen today. So this year, we were able to win the Lindbergh Bell Award, which is a huge recognition and honor for all the hard work of all of our staff day in and day out. You know, we really couldn't do it without them, and so we're super thankful. Hi, I'm Lisa Terry, Vice President with Allied Universal Security Services here in North Carolina. This week, we continue to recognize our frontline heroes in healthcare security for all they do. To all the Allied Universal Healthcare Security Professionals throughout North America and beyond, thank you. Today, I am privileged to share on behalf of three other leaders. First, an Allied Universal Security Manager would like to specifically acknowledge the work of three Allied Universal Security Officers assigned to a hospital in Pennsylvania. Officers Michael Bowman, Eric Pierce, and Bryce Dean. On June 24, 2020, a suicidal individual climbed on top of a wall on the fourth level of a parking garage. The individual threatened to jump. While a hospital medic established a rapport with the individual, the three security officers established a perimeter around him. The medic made contact with one of the individual's family members and allowed the individual to speak with the family member via a speakerphone. This action helped to de-escalate the situation. However, the individual refused to come down from the wall. At this point, the security officers were able to speak with the individual 
and distract him long enough for the medic to take control with the security and police officers assistance and bring him to safety, averting a tragedy. Secondly, an Allied Universal General Manager would like to specifically acknowledge healthcare security officer professional Relister Kane for her response on January the 22nd of this year that saved the life of a female visitor at a hospital in Louisiana. The visitor entered the building near Officer Kane's post when she suddenly collapsed. She was suffering a cardiac event. Officer Kane performed CPR on the visitor until medical staff arrived. Officer Kane's quick thinking and fast response literally saved this individual's life, and the visitor's family has since come in to visit and personally thank Security Officer Kane. And finally, Security Manager at a hospital in North Carolina would like to acknowledge the security professionals at this hospital who have gone above and beyond their duties to provide excellent customer service to the patients, visitors, and clinical staff at that hospital. Under the guidance of supervisors Zolly Boone, Herbert Williams, Sean McNulty, Kearney Bryant, Alliston Hill, and others, these security professionals have shown compassion and provided a safe environment for all persons entering the property. Additionally, the officers at this facility recently noticed a car fire in the parking garage across from the emergency department. Their quick response to extinguish the fire kept it from responding to other vehicles in the parking deck. Great job by all of these everyday heroes. And I just wanna say thank you to all of these and to all of our heroes. Hi, my name's uh, Michael Millard. I'm the uh, security manager with Tenova Healthcare in Clarksville. Uh, we recently received the IAHSS uh, Program of Distinction Awards. First of all, I need to thank uh, my administration, who've been very supportive in me uh, actually getting this thing done, and above all, the security officers. I uh, came here about a year ago, started up the program, and naturally I came in contact with officers who have been here over 20 years. So naturally they were not keen on uh, working towards this award. Once we started the program, started getting into the training and them understanding what exactly it was that we were trying to get across to the team, uh, we started developing a lot better relationships and them gaining that training helped them to work better with hospital staff as well. It gave the hospital staff a better understanding of the fact that security is working with them instead of against them in many cases. I can't say enough how much the team came together and worked as a group instead of uh, individually. This not only brought out teamwork for the security department, but for the hospital as well. Can't stress enough how hard these officers work to get this award. Administration was very supportive, was able to give us the additional training time, funds to go through this, and actually get the program going. One of the things I want to convey to how important this program is, is getting the hospital staff to have a little more appreciation of what the officers go through. And this has been vital. My name is Gis Clerk Morissette. I'm the Security Training and Hiring Manager for Central Florida Division, Orlando, Florida area for the Security Department. I've been with um, Advent Health for going on five plus years now. And I'm happy and honored to be here with, with Brian to be discussing on um, Security Week with IHSS. And um, for me, I'm very thankful and very grateful for the team that we have. This has been a challenging year for a lot of people. For our security team, we've been challenged because of the pandemic and just coming together. And I'm happy for our leadership in having the vision and forethought to come together and um, synchronize us. For those of you who may not be familiar with Advent Health, Central Florida divisions particularly, we are nine main facilities. We like to call them campuses and growing. So you have those different 
facilities that need to work together and specifically with the um, security department. And prior to the pandemic, as government agencies, as major corporations started seeing what was developing, they were advising organizations to start implementing contingency plans. So our leadership, our security leadership, our executive leadership came together and they started putting a groundwork in place in the event that lockdowns were instituted, in the event that quarantining had to be implemented. And ahead of our organization's main incident command getting activated, our executive director um, pulled our leaders together and started pre-planning. So that kind of gave us a head start. And um, we're very grateful for that because we had a, a few tabletop where we sat down and mapped out what would need to happen in the event that um, lockdowns were instituted. And a couple of things came out of that that we were able to keep. One of them was we became better synchronized as a department. Um, we are able to um, reallocate our resources, our manpower, um, campus to campus, facility to facility, and even um, region to region in certain instances. We were able to, prior to the pandemic, our scheduling for our shifts were handled, some of them by each campus, some of them by each squad, each shift individually. So that is a bit chaotic when you're trying to, you know, allocate resources for 200 plus officers. So we created um, what is now a central scheduling where we have all of the different shifts from all of the different facilities able to view them all on one time and then can see where the gaps are in coverage, where extra resources are needed to be allocated. So that was a very positive thing that many of our leaders are happy that we now have. You know, it's not perfect. It's the first iteration of that. And like many of the things that we're doing, we continue to improve. And for the main recognition, why we're on this call, I would like to start with our executive director, Bill Marsis, and I've come to know him as a man who is very passionate and purpose-driven as far as how he would like to lead the security department and what he would like to see us, and as he mentions, being a world-class um, organization, being a world-class department. He, he blazes the trail for us. He's the one who is speaking to you know, the executive teams, he's the one that is helping us to become more integrated as far as our entire organization nationwide. So that is one of our longer term visions so that we can be um, more synchronized and that security in anywhere in Florida, security in Texas, security in any state is the same service and is just like everything else that Advent Health does is one system, one team. So along with that, my director, Justin Norred, he is the director of um, support services for the security department, and um, he helps bridge the um, executive team and my department who's training along with technologies and communications so that he can help see what we need, what resources we need, what challenges we're facing so that he can help get the approvals and the authorities that my emails can only go so far. Right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very thankful to him and that he's that person that I can go to when I do have those challenges. Very resourceful guy. Definitely glad to be working with him. Um, more personally, I have um, two people that I work with, training coordinator Paul Dake and central, central scheduler and uh, master instructor Cheryl Williams. They are my direct reports and they are invaluable to me. They are the ones that implement the instructor-led trainings that we put on for our new hires. They help coordinate the um, continuing education and the recertifications that we have for our teams. Even you know during the pandemic when we were in lockdown, Paul was able to go back to his officer days back in uniform and was able to help out where he was needed. Cheryl was able to, in the capacity of a leader as well, she helped out when they needed a supervisor at particular campuses. So it is, again, championing being a team and helping out where it's needed. Didn't matter what shift it was, day shift, night shift, they were there and they, they helped out. They still helped me out. 
in doing some of the heavy lifting on the campus level. And I can't you know, forget our supervisors system-wide, our frontline officers um, system-wide that are there every day. And they've, they've stepped up to the challenge. Everything that's happened this year, you know, they, they come with their questions, they come with their comment and their feedback. You know, we're the, the leaders. We try to be there and, and talk to them face to face, but we rely on them to be our eyes and ears, tell us what's going on so that we can give them the support that they need to do their jobs. They, they haven't disappointed. So um, definitely this week, we hope that, you know, they, they see the appreciation that we have for them. Um, there have been some, just some, some thank yous that our department has done, you know, catered um, lunches, catered breakfasts, and we have some swag that we like to give, Tumblr, you know, that kind of thing, just to show our appreciation for them. I hope that the best appreciation that they see is not in this week, but is the continued resources that we continue to get for them and continue to improve our department and just hear them out and help them grow as best as they can as officers so we, we can continue providing service for our community. Well, we had another great day of recognition of our healthcare heroes in security and safety. Before we wrap up, we'll be joined again by Chris Littlefield, who will share tip number four of nurturing an environment of appreciation. Hi, I'm Chris Littlefield from Beyond Thank You, and here are seven tips for nurturing a culture of appreciation. Tip number four, appreciate people's ideas. Some of the best ideas and the best ways to be able to take your services to the next level are in your frontline workers. So this week, reach out and ask them, what can we do to take our security to the next level? What can we do to better take care of the people who are? What can we do to make our environment more secure? Ask them and then listen and ask questions about what they would do to make it better. Because when you appreciate people's ideas, you appreciate the person as well. Thank you, Chris. And to hear more from Chris Littlefield, be sure to check out his website, beyondthankyou.com. That's beyondthankyou, all one word, dot com. Thank you for listening in today. And join us again tomorrow as we continue day five of recognition of our healthcare security heroes. With only three days left, the window is closing to recognize your team on the podcast. And if you wish to do so, just send me a text message at 647-372-2042. That's 647-372-2042. And we'll give you the opportunity to recognize your team. Thanks again for supporting the Healthcare Security Cast. I'm proud to share that we have now been downloaded in over 100 countries as of yesterday. So really thankful for that. And really thankful for all of our healthcare security heroes out there. Have a great day. And until tomorrow, stay safe and take care.